Hi everyone. Pinko Genovese was typical of the ships used by the Ligurian Navy in the Mediterranean from the middle of the 18th to the early 19th century. With a capacity of 300 tons, the vessel was set up with a three-masted latine sail format and this was only replaced in bad weather with a square sail system. The huge expanses of sails allowed them to outrun the enemy and the battery of cannon often assured victory in naval conflict. To enhance the speed of the Pinko, goods were also covered, and even stowed away on board. The Pinko only traveled in the Mediterranean and often close to the coast. The mizzen mast was movable to the left of midline mast set up to allow maximum use of the tiller. With good weather and favorable wind, the Pinko was a highly maneuverable and fast ship. Often the Ligurian pirates armed themselves with guns to attack the British ships that ventured into the Mediterranean through the Straits of Gibraltar. The Cretan War, also known as the War of Candia or the Fifth Ottoman Venetian War, was a conflict between the Republic of Venice and her allies, chief among them the Knights of Malta, the Papal States and France, against the Ottoman Empire and the Barbary States, because it was largely fought over the island of Crete, Venice's largest and richest overseas possession. The war lasted from 1645 to 1669 and was fought in Crete, especially in the city of Candia, and in numerous naval engagements and raids around the Aegean Sea with Dalmatia providing a secondary theatre of operations. Although most of Crete was conquered by the Ottomans in the first few years of the war, the fortress of Candia, modern Heraklion, the capital of Crete, resisted successfully. Its prolonged siege, Troy's rival as Lord Byron called it, forced both sides to focus their attention on the supply of their respective forces on the island. For the Venetians in particular, their only hope for victory over the larger Ottoman army in Crete lay in successfully starving it of supplies and reinforcements. Hence the war turned into a series of naval encounters between the two navies and their allies. Venice was aided by various Western European nations, who, exhorted by the Pope and in a revival of crusading spirit, sent men, ships and supplies to defend Christendom. Throughout the war, Venice maintained overall naval superiority, winning most naval engagements, but the efforts to blockade the Dardanelles were only partially successful, and the Republic never had enough ships to fully cut off the flow of supplies and reinforcements to Crete. The Ottomans were hampered in their efforts by domestic turmoil, as well as by the diversion of their forces north towards Transylvania and the Habsburg monarchy. The prolonged conflict exhausted the economy of the Republic, which relied on the lucrative trade with the Ottoman Empire. By the 1660s, despite increased aid from other Christian nations, war weariness had set in. The Ottomans on the other hand, having managed to sustain their forces on Crete and reinvigorated under the capable leadership of the Kuprilu family, sent a final great expedition in 1666 under the direct supervision of the Grand Vizier. This began the final and bloodiest stage of the Siege of Candia, which lasted for more than two years. It ended with the negotiated surrender of the fortress, sealing the fate of the island and ending the war in an Ottoman victory. In the final peace treaty, Venice retained a few isolated island fortresses off Crete, and made some territorial gains in Dalmatia. The Venetian desire for a revanche would lead, barely fifteen years later, to a renewed war from which Venice would emerge victorious. Crete, however, would remain under Ottoman control until 1897, when it became an autonomous state. It was finally united with Greece in 1913. Battles of the Dardanelles, 1654-1657 for 1654, the Ottomans marshalled their strength, the arsenal in the Golden Horn produced new warships, and squadrons from Tripolitania and Tunis arrived to strengthen the Ottoman fleet. The strengthened Ottoman fleet that sailed forth from the Dardanelles in early May numbered 79 ships, 40 sailing ships, 33 galleys and 6 galleasses, and further 22 galleys from around the Aegean and 14 ships from Barbary stood by to reinforce it off the straits. This force considerably outnumbered the 26 ships of the Venetian blockade fleet under Giuseppe Dolphin. Although the battle that followed resulted in an Ottoman victory, for the Venetians, 
given the successful escape of their fleet from the superior Ottoman force, coupled with reports of large Ottomans' casualties and the great bravery displayed by the Venetian crews, it counted as a moral victory. The Ottoman fleet, now reinforced by the Aegean and Barbary squadrons, plundered the Venetian island of Tinos, but retreated after only a brief skirmish with the Venetians under Alvise Mosenigo on 21 June. Kara Murad Pasha succeeded in evading the Venetians for the remainder of the year, with both fleets sailing back and forth in the Aegean, before returning to the Dardanelles in September due to agitation among the fleet's janissaries. The final months of 1654 were marked by a significant change in the Venetian leadership, Mosenigo died at Candia, and was succeeded as acting captain general of the sea by Francesco Morosini, who had distinguished himself in the previous battles. Morosini initiated a more energetic approach in the Venetian pursuit of the war, in the spring of 1655, he raided the Ottoman supply depot Tayinu and raised the port town of Volos in a night attack on 23 March. In early June, Morosini sailed to the Dardanelles, awaiting the sally of the Ottoman fleet, which was however delayed because of political upheaval in the Ottoman government. Leaving Lazaramo Senegal with half the fleet, 36 ships, to keep watch at the straits, Morosini returned to the Cyclades. A week after his departure however, on 21 June, the Ottoman fleet, numbering 143 ships under Mustafa Pasha, appeared. The resulting battle was a clear Venetian victory. The Ottoman fleet avoided action for the remainder of the year, before it withdrew to winter quarters, leaving Morosini free to undertake an ultimately unsuccessful siege of the strategically important island fortress of Morvasia off the southeastern coast of the Peloponnese. In September, Morosini was posted as the new Proveditor of Crete, with Lorenzo Marcello as the new Captain General of the Sea. Although in the previous years the Venetians had generally held the upper hand against the Ottomans, largely controlling the Aegean and able to extract tribute and recruits from its islands, they had been unable to transform this superiority into concrete results. Despite their defeats, the Ottomans were still free to roam the Aegean and resupply their forces in Crete, in particular through the use of supply fleets from places like Alexandria, Rhodes, Chios or Manamvasia in the Peloponnese. In June 1656 however, a combined Venetian-Maltese fleet of 67 ships under Marcello inflicted on the Ottomans, with 108 ships under Keenan Pasha, their worst naval defeat since Lepanto, 60 Ottoman ships were destroyed and 24 captured and 5,000 Christian galley slaves set free, although the Venetians and Maltese suffered some casualties too, including the loss of Captain General Marcello. Although in the aftermath of this victory the Maltese contingent departed, the scale of their success enabled the Venetians under Barbado do it to seize Tenedos on 8 July and Lemnos on 20 August. Using the two islands, strategically located near the entrance of the Straits, as forward bases, the Venetian blockade became much more effective. As a result, the resupply of Crete was effectively cut off and Constantinople itself suffered a shortage of food during the following winter. In 1657, the Ottomans reversed the situation. A new and energetic Grand Vizier, Kuprulu Mehmed Pasha, armed with almost dictatorial authority, had been appointed in September 1656, and reinvigorated the Ottoman war effort. The fleet was strengthened under the new Kapudan Pasha, Topol Mehmed, and in March, the Ottomans succeeded in evading the Venetian blockade of the Straits and sailed towards Tenedos. They did not attack the island however, because the Venetian garrison was too strong. In May, the Venetians under Lazaramo Senego achieved some minor victories, on the 3rd of May and two weeks later at Swayzic. Reinforced by papal and Maltese ships, Mosenigo sailed to the Dardanelles, awaiting the renewed sally of the Ottoman fleet, which came on 17 July. Due to disagreements among the Christian commanders, the Allied battle line had not been completely formed, and the Ottoman fleet was able to exit the Narrows before battle was joined. The battle consisted of a series of actions over three days, with both fleets drifting south and west out of the Dardanelles into the Aegean. 
The battle ended in the evening of the 19th of July, when an explosion destroyed the Venetian flagship and killed Mo Senego, forcing the Allied fleet to withdraw. In this battle, the Venetians had inflicted heavier casualties on the Ottomans than they had suffered, but the Ottomans had achieved their goal, the blockade was broken. Under the personal direction of the Grand Vizier and strengthened by men and ships from the Barbary states, the Ottoman fleet proceeded to recover Lemnos, on 31 August, and to Nados, on 12 November, thus removing any hope the Venetians may have had of re-establishing the blockade as firmly as before. Thanks for watching.